Super Bowl champions kicking off to one of the greatest players of all time. And two of the best teams, at least as far as we're concerned, of this year. Bonio. Woodson at the five. Down at about the 25. Let's look at the Steeler offense. Neil O'Donnell, 230-pound quarterback, fifth season from Maryland. In front of him, an excellent offensive line. Jackson and Searcy are the tackles. Kalis and Duval Love and the great Dermotti John, uh, Dawson in the middle. Barry Foster, John L. Williams, Charles Johnson, the rookie, number one draft choice, and Andre Hastings wide. Jonathan Hayes starts at tight end. First and 10, Pittsburgh. Foster, room. About nine. Stopped by Darren Smith. And Tony Tolbert. The Dallas defense, they lost some depth. Haley, Lett, Russell, Maryland, and Tony Tolbert. They lost Casillas. They lost Ken Norton. Smith, Jones, and Edwards. Robert Jones, the new middle linebacker, although he started a couple of years ago. The secondary, excellent secondary. Foster again. First down, Pittsburgh. Stopped by Robert Jones. A lot of eyes will be focused on him today. Yeah, if you look at the Dallas Cowboys, uh, I think they're probably the same team on offense, maybe even a little better, but I don't think their defense is as good as it was a year ago. Certainly not as deep. Well, as you mentioned, they, you know, they did lose a couple players. They don't have those backup guys, and they've had trouble all preseason against the run, and as we said earlier, Gary Foster is going to be a test today. Had some nagging injuries to Jonathan Hayes from O'Donnell. Robert Jones made the stop, but it's another Pittsburgh first down. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, you want to see a matchup, Pat? Watch this one here. Here's John Jackson, who I think is a heck of a tackle. He's going to be blocking against Charles Haley. Now, this is pass protection. Take that inside hand jam it in there and Jackson is so strong he can just ride Haley right to the ground that's the way you want to start your pass because they need a yard Foster got away from Haley I don't know if he got that yard or not Dixon Edwards and Robert Jones out to make the hit after he eluded Haley uh, you'd think that they would just kind of run that thing straight ahead and not spend so much time going right and left and they look at you know, Barry Foster. They were worried about you know his ankle injury. He missed the, the last seven games of the season, had surgery in the offseason, and they say that they think he's back to normal, but it's really hard to tell in preseason because you don't play at the same level and the same speed you're playing today. Third and a yard. That's the Foster O'Donnell. And complete. Intended for John L. Williams. The offensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers is Ron Earhart. We've known him for years. Remember when he was with the Giants? And that's kind of a surprise. I mean, Ron Earhart is the kind that runs it, runs it, runs it at you in play pass. But you think on that third and short, I would have anticipated that he would go for the first down. Mark Royals, six foot five inch punter for the Steelers, gets one off the side of his foot. Kevin Williams. Williams to about the 24, 25, but a flag on the play back at the line of scrimmage. That's going to be an automatic first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Pat, because they're saying it's against the Cowboys. Remember, they were just fourth and one, so any type of penalty will be a first down. Referee is Bob McElwee. Apparently there is a problem with his microphone, not us. Barry Switzer. Big day for him. I think it is, you know, it's it's a big day for the Cowboys. It's a big day for the for the Steelers because 
I think they're going to find out a lot about themselves. You know, are the Steelers really one of the best teams in football? Do they have a shot at going all the way? You know, can the Cowboys repeat for the third time? You know, what's the change? Not having Jimmy Johnson, having Barry oh, yeah. Switzer. A lot of those questions will start as we answer today. Totally different coaching styles as Barry Foster tries the right side, is stopped by Tolbert in Russell, Maryland. Russell Maryland played that one tough. You know, Russell Maryland had played right tackle last year, and he was moved to left tackle this year. And he's, he's a real strong guy. If you watch him here, you know, he'll get in here and get that penetration. And any time that can happen, they're not going to gain. Second you see how he starts here, then he gets the penetration right there, and that allows no hole or no cutback. Second and ten. South Foster hit hard by James Washington. Did well to hang on to it. James Washington was saying that Neil O'Donnell throws a lot of inside passes, although that one was to the outside. He was telling us last night, he said, I'll tell you one thing. You're going to see a lot of interceptions today, and if you don't, you're going to see a lot of collisions. There's there was the first big collision. There are tackles, and there are collisions. That was a collision. Third and seven. Third and seven on the line. O'Donnell back to throw it again, pulls it down. Coming out of there. Close. Maybe not the first down, however. Didn't get enough. Tell you, Leon Lett was there, number 78. He was kind of right in O'Donnell's face. But his guard, Duval Love, did a good job of staying with him. Right, 78. You see, he's right there. Duval Love stays with him. So when Let goes up, he would then that made O'Donnell able to escape to the outside. Good effort by Jeff Coat. Now the Steelers, are, the Steelers are going for it on fourth down. Fourth and two. You now last time they got that third and short, they went for a play pass. Now they decided to go for it on fourth down and maybe are going to re-decide if they just took a timeout. They'll have two left, fourth and two. Bill Cowher was saying yesterday that this was decision time for him when he got down here, whether he would go for it, whether he'd try to field goal, or whether he'd punt. Remember that extra seven yards this year, one of the new, real, uh, new rules. Where they mark it back to the spot of the field goal attempt. Yeah, and I think that you know, you know, here they're they're out of Gary Anderson's range, and it's whether you you punt the ball and you know and try and get him inside the ten yard line, or you go for it, and if you don't make it, you let the Cowboys start for the first time in the forty yard line. You know, maybe just being conservative the way I was as a coach, I would think in this situation here that you would punt. And, and make the Cowboys play with a long field. That doesn't look like it's the Steelers' decision. It does not. Foster is on the end of the huddle and in the backfield with John L. Williams. That's the regular setup. John L. the blocker, but O'Donnell's going to throw. He's also the pass receiver, and he got enough, I believe. He was over the first down limitation then he rolled back yeah when we when we talked to Bill Cowery he said the reason he got John L Williams was a little as a blocker but mostly as a pass receiver and that was a heck of a catch because that wasn't a good throw by Neil O'Donnell I mean that was high behind him and everything else and now they have to measure to see if he even got to the first down when he had to come back because it was behind he lost that first down yardage yeah, he got he got lost in space and got turned around. He got the he got the first down, but that was a pretty good call because John L. Williams was there, but that wasn't a very good throw by Neil O'Donnell. You know, sometimes you get all tense and nervous as a quarterback, and the toughest thing to do is throw those short or touch passes. And it's a tough catch, too, when you're going straight away from the quarterback like that. The way John L. was, you have shoulder pads and helmet and all that equipment you're wearing. Johnson was the man in motion. Foster fires it back to O'Donnell. And 
that Charles Haley, as we have seen him so often, make a big play. He like was that. In, he was in great position. He darn near he darn near intercepted the flea flicker. Nothing, nothing at Three Rivers Stadium, Dallas, Pittsburgh. 9:25 left to play in the first quarter. Charles Haley. I tell you, Charles Haley is a smart player, you know, because he's going to see the flea flicker, and you watch him right there. Now he sees it. He gets in between it, you see, and Foster had to fake the flea flicker and then come back and throw it again. O'Donnell Haley around the corner, draped around his legs with Russell Maryland. Uh, you know, I still say that you need a dominant player on your team. And Charles Haley is that type of player. Watch him right here. If you need a play, you're going to get big plays from Haley. You see, they don't block him with a line. The line blocks down. John L. Williams is trying to block Charles Haley. Charles Haley sees that. Then he goes back for the flea flicker, almost intercepts the flea flicker. And then on the next play, comes in and gets a sack. Two big plays for Haley. Third and 29. Haley again. Chasing O'Donnell. Jet coat after him now. And here comes Leon Lett. And Lett gets him out of bounds. I think they were trying to set up a screen to Haley's side. I think they're 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 pulling out everything they had. They they tried to set up a screen to that side. They tried the flea flicker and they tried the straight drop back pass. They've gone for it on fourth down, third and short. They went for a play pass. Ron Earhart is pulling out all the stops here. And the Steelers can't stop going backwards. Mark Royal. Kevin Williams fumble. Got it back. Got a good bounce. You know, that's what a dominant player is. I mean, that's what an impact player is, and that's why Charles Haley is one of those players. The Hardly. Steelers were moving. They needed a play, and Haley gave it to him. Haley hardly played or practiced. And he needs some gas, I think. <laughs> I don't know if they have any oxygen <laughs> down there on that sideline, but I'll guarantee you after he gets some fluids in him, he'll go for that oxygen if they have it. First down, Cowboys. At their own 29. Irvin is right. Woodson is with him. Harper sets up inside Irvin. Now goes in motion. Incomplete intended for Harper from Aikman. Let's look at that Cowboy offensive unit led by perhaps the best, Troy Aikman. In front of him, a fine offensive line. Derek Kennard is the new member of that group replacing Kevin Gogan. Emmett Smith and Daryl Johnston in the backfield. Irvin and Harper, the wide receivers. Nova check the tight end. Second and ten. Smith is deep. Aikman will throw it. Aikman, Irvin. First down, Dallas. Here is the Steeler defensive units. They play a 3 4. Seals, Steed, and Gerald Williams. The front three, four fine linebackers, Lloyd and Kevin Green on the outside, Brown and Levon Kirkland in the middle. Secondary figures, Perry, Carnell Lake, and oh, you got Rod Woodson. Three three First and ten. We do for Emma Smith and we get it. Only a couple. You know, we mentioned Emmett Smith. We know that you know he's going to be a big part of this offense. Then if they stop that, then of course then they're going to have Troy Aikman throw into Michael Irvin, and that's going to be one of the great matchups because Rod Woodson is going with him every place he goes on the field. Here comes Woodson. Irvin comes right. Maybe a yard to Emmett Smith. No more. Chad Brown, the defender. One thing we were talking to Emmett Smith yesterday, and he said if there's anything different in the offense this year with off 
with Ernie Zampezia coordinator it's they're throwing them more swing passes and flat passes than they did in the past. There's an injured stealer. Gerald Williams I think is down. That's who it is. That is Gerald Williams. He's the starting left defensive end. Probably the most experienced of the of the defensive linemen of the Steelers. Plays the run well and has his work cut out for him today because he's going up against another big strong guy and a guy that I think is maybe the best tackle in all football and that's Eric Williams. You got Williams against Williams. There's Ernie Zampezi on the left. See, Ernie always has a lot of pens, Pat. That's one thing. He's always, he can write with one, two, three. You know, whatever you need, Ernie Zampezi has a pen for it. He also has a play for whatever you need. He can chew on one. Ernie Zampezi worked with Norv Turner, of course. Ernie is intense. Love. No McCat. To the 35-yard line of Pittsburgh. That's why the Cowboys are so tough. I mean, you got Michael Irvin on one side, Alvin Harper on the other side, Emmett Smith in the backfield, and maybe Troy Aikman's favorite receiver is this guy right here, Jay Novacek. I think anytime he gets third down or really needs something, it really has to find a play, I think he looks for number 84. And you can't forget to mention the great pass protection on that play. 21 yards gain, first and 10, Emmett Smith. Backwards, hit hard by Kevin Green at the end of that run. Yeah, those those guys, they have great bookends on this Pittsburgh Steeler defense. You have Kevin Green on one side and Greg Lloyd on the other side. So you're either going to run right this way. When you run to your right, you're going to find boom, 91 right there. If you run to your left, the bad news is you're going to find Greg Lloyd, number 95, on that side. Smith got four, second and six at the Steeler 31. Novacek. Hey, Novacek jumped, looked like he got a ball start. Tried to run Before backwards. The snap, number 84, offense. Five yards, second down. He was so proud of that catch that he made, he just decided to jump offside. There he is, number 84 at the top of the screen, the left there. Watching the play hasn't been snapped yet. You wonder what he was going to do. He was going to block down on Ray Seals. He had good position. Didn't even make any contact. That was going to be a position block. That's a good block. No contact. That's Michael Irvin in motion. Green rushing from the outside. Nova check again. Inside the 20 to the 19. Well, Novacek gave him that five yards back, and then he said he had to go get it back. Again, this whole thing starts with good pass protection. If you want to watch a pass protector, just watch that guy right here. He's going to come out and block Kevin Green. And boom, he throws that right hand and just knocks him off course. Look at the room that they give Troy Aikman to throw the ball. Good pickup by Emmett Smith also. That's that's great pass protection. Emmett Smith in there making the pocket break. This is Emmett Smith to about the 17. Stopped by Kevin Green again. Now that's one thing that those two outside linebackers do. Kevin Green and Greg Lloyd is they is they both come in from the outside. And if you're going to run away from them, you darn near have to block. Remember years ago they started they they didn't block Lawrence Taylor when they'd run away from them. He'd make all the plays. Then they started to block him. I think with these two linebackers, Lloyd and Green, hey, well, right, hey, you have to do the same over. thing. They'll run everything down from behind. Second and seven. Aikman. Novacek. Nothing there this time. Greg Lloyd. Greg Lloyd. <laughs> He started to walk over to the cowboy bench and he was pointing at them. Don't think you're going to fool me. That was a full play. Greg Lloyd is a very physical guy. He's not he's not the biggest guy in football. You see, he only weighs 226 pounds, 
but he's a tough guy. I mean, he is a card-carrying, legitimate tough guy. And he's a smart player. You know, and that went there, they tried to fool Two him. Over. And no player likes to be fooled. Here comes the Steeler blitz. Aikman just got rid of it. Hit by Woodson. Anytime he's coming from that position, you better have somebody assigned to block him. You know, and that's what he does. You know, you always think of Woodson, you think of him as a cover guy, and you think of Woodson as a as a, a returner, but he's also a great blitzer. And he has great timing. You know, you see him, he stood back there and he waited and he waited and he hit it and then just hit that line of scrimmage just as the ball was snapped. Novacek will hold for Bonio. The rookie is good on his first attempt in the regular season from 40 yards away. Three minutes left, 3 nothing Dallas. Came off that field after that uh, field goal, and he was really upset. Watch him here. I mean, he's yelling at coaches. He's yelling at players. Of course, he hasn't caught a pass yet, and I think that probably has something to do with it. He's caught one pass, but he, you know, likes to get into the game, likes to get into the game early, and... They probably, you know, Rod Woodson has been on him all the time, and then on third down, Woodson becomes a slot cover guy, and then he comes on the blitz, and then he probably didn't like the fact that they didn't pick up that blitz. Johnson back deep this time, back to the goal line. The number one draft choice. Hit by Matt Vanderbeek and taken down there. At Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, three nothing, the Cowboys lead. First and ten, Pittsburgh. Dallas leading three nothing. Now for McDonald's game. at Three Rivers Stadium. Pat Summerall, John Madden. Barry Foster, tipped up by Russell Maryland, Robert Jones. You know, two things we see in this series here now. Uh, Eric Green, the all-pro tight end for the Steelers, just came in. Remember, he, he held out and, uh, and just came to camp last Wednesday, so he was just in there. And then Charles Haley wasn't in there. Jim Jeffcoat was in for him. And now Haley is just coming in on this down. Long yardage. They go with O'Donnell in the shotgun, the spread formation with Stone back there with him. O'Donnell, Stone, incomplete. Well, that wouldn't have been a first down anyway. I mean, the, the Steelers go with five wide receivers when they put Stone in the backfield they have stone and then four other wide receivers and then he comes out and throws some little one yard pass that doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense to me Mark Royals again in and Kevin Williams back deep for the Cowboys they lead three nothing just over a minute and a half left to play in the first quarter opening day Two-time Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys try to make it three. Williams gets away from the first man. Can't shake the rest of them. Craig Keith down to stop Williams. What makes a sharp team Dallas? Their own 37. Aikman gives to Emmett Smith. Nobody gets there quicker than he does. And then does something about it after he gets there quickly. I mean, he, he is really fun to watch. I mean, if you were going to be a coach or a player, I think you'd want this guy, number 22, to go with you. Just watch him. He starts with the lead here, follows the lead for a while, just cuts right off Johnston's block, and then just makes another cut, and he's in there for a first down. I mean, the guy just has great vision, great feel, balance, strength, everything a running back needs. Here he is again. To the Steeler 45. 
Plus, the other thing he has is toughness. I mean, I think, remember that giant game last oh. year at the end of the season? Never forget that one. I think that was one of the toughest performances by an NFL player that I've ever seen in my life. You look up in front of him at Mark Stepnoski. What a job he's done coming back from a very serious knee injury. The last two plays, outstanding blocks by Stepnoski. How about the size of those two guards, Nate Newton and Derek Kennard? Aikman. That ball deflected by Carnell Wake. Now that's the thing that these Steelers will do. They'll bring those safeties on you. You know, we saw that they brought Woodson. He's a corner. They brought him and they got a blitz. Then that's their strong safety, Carnell Lake. They bring him on a blitz. He's going to come right from the right side here. And if you just look, you see him right here. He comes from the outside. Aikman was trying to throw to the side that Carnell Lake was coming from. He gets right in his face. He's trying to get the ball out there to Emmett Smith, but he can't get it through Carnell Lake. Third and four, Aikman back in a hurry. Gets it to Novacek. Shy of the first down and out of field goal range. One thing the Steelers defense wants to do, and they're doing a good job, is keeping the Cowboys out of rhythm. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Dallas three, Pittsburgh nothing. Come back this city is made. Three Rivers Stadium just across the river. First quarter statistics. Steelers have minus 11 yards passing. A couple of big plays by Haley. Stuck them backwards in the minus area. Right, and they only have, totally, they only have eight yards. Here to fourth down now. And I think this is a thing now we're going to see more and more of this around this 40 yard line yeah. area. Teams going <laughs> for it on fourth down. Well, we saw the Steelers try. Novacek in motion, Emmett Smith. First. Now that's the kind of play you run on fourth and short. Well, yeah, what they did is you're going to see Nate Newton here. You're always going to get a lead. Here goes your motion guy. Now big Nate's going to come and lead. And when you get a big 330-pound guy leading you and you only need a yard, you ought to be able to get behind him right there and find enough to get you a first down. If big Nate, he can get that stuff going out there, and then he can get it turned. And if he does, Emmett's going to get a first down. He'll get a pancake. That's Emmett. You know, I think all the great players really don't know exactly what they do. You know, when you say, what do you do? If a guy can explain everything he does, he's probably average. I know that Emmett Smith was saying that nine out of ten times when he runs a ball, he doesn't go where it's supposed to go. Well, if you have to stop and think about it, you're never going to get it done. Yeah, and it's always the guys who say, well, I take this step, then I do this, yeah. and I said, you know, and they can't play, but they're good talkers. Three, three. Second and eight. Aikman outside Urban. Uh, another Dallas first down. There's that matchup we were talking about, Rod Woodson on Michael Irvin. I think Michael Irvin would like the ball every play. I mean, I think if you know you run a few damn it and then throw the rest to Michael, and I think that uh, he would be real happy. And again, I think it's about being a competitor. You know, some guys, it's a selfish thing. I don't think it is with, with him. I think it's just about being a competitor, wanting the ball, wanting to win. Did you ever see a really good receiver that didn't want the ball on every play? I've seen some average ones that didn't want it. That's Emmett Smith. He's certainly far above average, down to the Steeler 15. And there's Michael Irvin there, and he's mad at himself there because with a guy like Emmett, you know, it's like Russian roulette. You never know which one he's going to break. So those wide receivers have to block every time. And maybe one more block, that would have been a touchdown. But sometimes you watch Emmett Smith, and it's just like a man playing with young guys. And he's a young guy. Yeah, he is, but he plays at a different level yeah, than most young guys. Flags before they got anything underway. Scott well, Galbert was start the man in motion. Before the snap. Number 88, offense, five yards, 
First down. Now, there's no need for that. I mean, he's out here. The ball is going to be run to the inside. He saw Woodson make a little move on him, and he started to, to move. There's no excuse for that. I mean, that that is a, a poor play. You're outside. They're not running at you. They're running away from you. The last guy that should jump off sides are the two outside receivers on an inside run. That's Novacek in motion this time. Aikman rolls it, wheels it to Novacek. Juggled it a minute and then got possession. <laughs> Chad Brown made the stop. The thing with the Cowboys is they just keep eating away at you. You know, with different guys. I mean, it's a pass to Irvin. It's a couple runs to Emmett Smith. It's a couple passes to Jay Novacek. They haven't even found Harper yet. Look, Jay Novacek has caught five passes already. When you ask Troy who his favorite receiver is, so I, I think I, I mean I know about Michael Irvin, but I think his his favorite is really Jay Novacek. Well, he was saying last night that Novacek he can throw the ball into an area. And Novacek can make up so much ground and get the ball. Remember that year that Novacek was holding out. He wasn't in camp and every night when they put in plays in training camp Troy Aikman would fax those plays to Joe Na to Jay Novacek. He may have sent some copies to Joe Namath too. <laughs> yeah. Jay Novacek was, was someplace cutting horses or something. He was on some ranch in Wyoming getting faxes. I'd be surprised he even had a fax machine on a ranch. You're cutting horses. The 25 second clock is not operating correctly, and he has taken this time out, the official has, Bob McElwee, to notify both benches. One of the things that happen on opening days, the you know, clocks don't work yeah. properly. Always seem to get a lot of big returns, punt blocks, things like that. Second down. Nine yards needed for a first. They come. Has to throw it away to avoid the sack. Hey, he was looking at Novacek on that time. Levon Kirkland, number 99, I think is a pretty good inside linebacker. He's the guy that calls the defenses for the Steelers. And he knew that he was looking at Novacek, and he just turned and ran and got right between Troy Aikman and Jay Novacek. Steelers will go with a couple of extra defensive backs. Cowboys at the Steelers 14 yard line. Yeah, the Steelers William. like to blitz too. And here they come. They might have come too soon. They get the ball to Novacek. No play. No play. They did come too soon. False the... start. No false start. Snap. Number 80. Offense. Take it Five yards. Third down. Against Harper. That's what it'll do. It was Rod Woodson, you know, again coming there. When when they go to their nickel package, he plays on the slot. And a lot of times that where that's where he blitzes from. In fact, that's why they put him on the spot uh, on the slot so that he can either blitz or cover. And he timed that one almost perfectly. In fact, so perfectly that he made Alvin Harper jump. Both times he's blitzed. He's timed it very well. Third and 14. Back near the 20. Draw play to Emmett Smith. Back to about the 13. McKire, Tim McKire, former 49er, Florida Fal former Falcon, former Detroit Lion. Of course, after they after they throw him for a loss, now they're they're not going to blitz him. They're just going to pass rush. But in doing so, look at that big lane that they give up for the draw, and McKayer has to make that tackle. That was a pretty good tackle, open field tackle by Tim McKayer. Novacek holds. Bonio is good from 31 yards this time, and the Cowboys lead six nothing. This one short. Woodson at about the 13. That's what that new rule was supposed to do. 
The Steelers will start off at about their own 42. Did you see Woodson put that thing in, oh, in, boy. in second gear? He had it like in first gear, and then he saw a little open, and went, boom! He just kicked that thing into another gear. Just watch it. As we see him come up here, we'll see one gear. He kind of has a gear here, then he puts a little more gear, and then right there, he puts it into that other gear. You just saw that hold, and boom, he was going to hit that thing. It looked awfully good to him there for about a second. First and 10 from the 42. O'Donnell chased by left. Barry Foster was the intended receiver. O'Donnell threw it away. Big Leon chasing. And I don't think that the that the Steelers have really established much so so far, but they really haven't established Barry Foster. You can see Emmett Smith has run for 51 yards already. Barry Foster only for 14. And I think if the Steelers are going to be in this game offensively, I think they have to establish and run and keep giving the ball to Barry Foster at some point. That's what they said they were going to do. This is Foster. Cut down shy of midfield, shy of a first down. James Washington cut his feet out from underneath. Yeah, because what that does is that calms the defense down. It calms the pass rush down. It brings those defensive backs up. And then, and then you can start your passing. Here they do it off a delay or a draw thing. They get Haley to go to the inside, and Foster just goes right by him. Third down. About three. Kicks back to Strike Stone. Stone is not backwards and out of bounds. Close to a first down. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I tell you, Darren Woodson was proud of himself on that one. Number 28. Remember, Darren Woodson was a linebacker in college. They made him a safety. And on that one, he hit Dwight Stone just like he was a linebacker. Now watch him when he comes in here, 28, right there. Boom, he knocks him. Well, Dwight Stone goes backward. Look at that, he stands up and starts pointing to him. When you hit a guy and knock him sideways or perpendicular, that's, that's a pretty good explosion. Larry Brown also helped with the hit on Dwight Stone. Woodson doesn't think he got enough. Doesn't make any difference, really, what he thinks. Now, remember a couple of years ago when when Woodson and, and Kenny Gant were the the nickelbacks. That's when the Dallas defense were the, was, was the best. They'd bring those guys in on long yardage and they raised all kinds of havoc. First and ten, Pittsburgh. Foster and John L. Williams behind O'Donnell. Take the Foster. O'Donnell has Eric Green complete. Inside the 35, about the 33. Eric Green's excited. He just got here Wednesday. And he said, okay, finally start getting the ball to me. We'll get some offense going here. He had good protection. Charles Haley was rushing from his right side, and he had good protection from Leon Searcy. Now, Eric Green is big. He listed at 280. He's bigger. Yeah, but he's... Darn near too big for a tight end. I mean, you, know, you think most coaches see a guy that big and say, heck, you're a tackle. Of holding that'll be an automatic first down. Holding number 26 defense. Evans. Five yards. Automatic first down. 
Evan Smith. You see here, O'Donnell is really jumping around a lot and moving around a lot and then buying time. And in doing so, you'll see what happens. You see Kevin Smith right there just grabbed his guy. You see him there? He just grabbed a hold of him as he started to go inside. That's the trick. Automatic first down. Big to Foster. O'Donnell away from Tolbert. Chased out of bounds by Chad Henning. And one thing it seems like either real or imagined every time O'Donnell goes back to throw there's someone there that is disrupting him. You know either like like that time was Tolbert something that's making him bring the ball down and have to scramble with it. He's feeling no question about it. He's feeling as you say the pressure. Well, you know sometimes I mean early I think he imagined a couple because right. there were a couple times he spinned out he spinned and went out and uh, there was no pressure. There. I don't know what he was spinning from. This time he has time. Incomplete. Ernie Mills the intended receiver. Covered by Woodson. But Journey Mills here, he's going to start on the inside in the slot. He's going to run what we call an out and up. He starts to the sideline, then he goes up the field, and that was a pretty good throw. I mean, it, you know, it looks like, looked like he stopped his feet going. Looks like if he would have just taken another step or two, you see, he stopped running with his feet. If he just keeps those feet going, you know, I mean, it's easy to say. Stop, up there, stop the, running with your feet. What, the, what the heck's that big old tackle talking about? Stop running with your feet. <laughs> it looked like he stopped his feet and just put his hands out. O'Donnell wheels it over to Stone. Stone's got a couple of blockers. But the Cowboy defense, Bill Bates, Larry Brown, converge in a hurry. Yeah, they're trying to use Stone more like Dave Megan and those types of things where they put him in the backfield. See, they got four wide receivers, and then they have Stone right here. And then they got the four wide receivers going down. But the thing that's wrong with that is when you have to go to that guy on third and long, uh, you're only going to get a yard or two. I mean, you like to throw the ball up the field or don't even get in that formation. Anderson. Royals the holder from 41 yards away. He's good, and the Steelers are on the scoreboard. Nothing but field goals at 6-3. Anderson kicks off. Fine drive kick is going to be mishandled. Now they got to come out of there with it. Kevin Williams. I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a run to get it back to where he got it. Myron Bell made the stop. It was in flags on the play. Excuse me. No, I was just saying in the pregame show today, Jimmy Johnson thought that Kevin Williams was going to be one of the big differences in this Dallas Cowboy offense this year. You can see, you know, as a returner and, you know, on third down, they bring him in as a receiver. Well, Jimmy drafted him, too. Yeah, maybe that's why. I, I don't know. I mean, Alvin Harper hasn't caught a pass yet. So you wonder how they're going to find room for Kevin Williams. Like. You said this. I mean, I mean, he made some moves right in there. There's the penalty right there, the face mask. And if he gets by that one, the only one left was the kicker, Gary Anderson. Another penalty, apparently. Bob McElwee wants a little. A little I think conference. this is what we call multi penalties. A rule by committee. I remember one time, Pat, I was in this stadium and they, they had a play and yes. all the officials got together and yes. talked about it. And one of them went and got on the phone, didn't Yeah, he? got on the phone. Personal foul, 40 on the kicking team with a 15-yard face mask foul. We have a late hit against the other club. That's a double foul after change of possession. By rule, the receivers keep the football at the end of the play. First down. The Dallas foul, the personal foul is against number 91. Now the other club is the two-time defending champion, 
Super Bowl champion. And uh, here's the first part of it. Now, that would have been a 15-yard penalty. But just because they have a 15-yard penalty, then you can't do what happened on top of the flame up there and have another penalty. This is Emmett Smith. And he is off and running. Emmett Smith finally heard it out of bounds by Carnell Lake. That's something. That's the thing about Emmett Smith. You just keep handing it, handing it, handing it, handing it, and you don't know when it's going to happen, but you know it is going to happen. He got in there behind Derek Kennard. You watch him. He's going to run right in this hole right here. Boom, boom. He gets those blocks, breaks through, makes a great move there, then outruns a couple until Lake gets there. 45-yard gain for Emmett Smith. But that was perfect timing. I mean, those blocks and the handoff and his hitting the hole. They give him a rest. Well, he didn't run with the ball. He caught the pass from Aikman. Second and nine. Right now, let's take you back to Los Angeles to James Brown for an update. Hey, Pat, Buddy Ryan called the Rams the worst coach team in the league last year. The Rams want to make up for it. Joe Kelly hits Larry Centers. The mid-air recovery is made by Todd Light, and he makes like lightning. 74 yards worth down the left side, and the Rams go on top by the score of 7 to nothing. Back to Pat. Here at Three Rivers Stadium at 6-3, second and 10. 5.50 left in the first half. Dallas leading. Again, it's Emmett Smith. Greg Lloyd made the stop this time. Yeah, we talked earlier, Pat, that Emmett Smith will get 100 yards or, or more in this game. We didn't know it would be in the first half, and Emmett Smith is going to have his 100 yards this first half, if not on this next play that he carries. Well, in fact, he's there right now. He is there. Talking about 100, there he is. I'll tell you, he may, yeah, you know, he's probably right now the best player in the league. Here comes the blitz after eight when they picked it up pretty well this time. Outside, caught by Michael Irvin. Gets back to his feet, out of bounds. He was down, they say, back at about the 13 as a result of contact. Dion Figures made the stop. You know, Emmett Smith will do everything. I mean, he'll not only run the ball, we know that, but he'll catch the ball, but he'll also block on pass protection. You want to see, he finds, boom, he puts a hit right there. Seals hit, Seals hit Aikman just as he threw that ball. A Aikman saw him coming, though, and protected himself. But that's what I've always liked about Emmett Smith. I mean, he just doesn't carry the ball. You know? I mean, he'll... He is a complete running back. You'll carry it, block it, and catch it. Right now, he gets a little rest. Four and a half minutes left to play before halftime. 6-3, Dallas. And that's Smith to the Steeler 10. Stopped by Levon Kirkland. That's pretty good block in there. You, the, the moose just comes in on a lead. You get right in there between Nate Newton and Mark Tuane. That's some big, powerful guys over on that side. And if you just look, they're going to come here. Here's your lead, lead right here. Block, block right here. And just come right in behind your lead. You got the eye formation. There's Daryl Johnston on the lead there. Good movement. Everyone goes down, and Emmett just goes right over the top. Third and two. Emmett again. Emmett Smith will have a first down and out of bounds inside the Steeler five. But Smith has been running so much his, his, uh, his, his belt came loose. Watch, watch the fullback here, Daryl Johnston. He makes a good decision. See, he was going to cut in there and then, then, and then he didn't. He bounced it to the outside, which brought Emmett Smith to the outside and a first down. Had Johnston taken it inside, Emmett would have had her taken it inside or go outside without a blocker. And a lot of backs would have cut it inside anyway. Yeah, and and and, and a lot of blockers would have yep. just barreled their head in there stupidly. First and goal. No gain for him at this time. Still 6-3, 2.50 left, first half. Let's just steal a defensive line now. The closer you get to the goal line, the 
the lower the defensive line has to get. They take on the line. Greg Lloyd does an excellent job of taking on his block here, so there's no bounce out, and that forced Emmett Smith to have to cut it back inside. Second goal at the five. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's been to Emmett Smith again. Cut down at about the two and a half by LeVon Kirkland again. Smith brought down by Kirkland Williams. You know, if you look at Emmett Smith, he's only been tackled by a defensive lineman twice. Linebackers eight times, secondary five. So he's gotten by the line just about every time. Well, you mentioned before, the Steelers have an outstanding group of linebackers. Very active. Seven central. Third and goal. Two and a half yards they need. Flags, movement, pass knocked down by Gerald Williams. Ball flopping backwards. <laughs> yeah. Fast movement. Ball knocked back. Hey, the Steelers are tough on that third down because they get up in those blitz positions. Prior to the snap, number 22, offense. And that's about the fourth time that the Cowboys have jumped. That time it was Five Emmett yards, Smith. Third down. And you see what happens. You see when they get up there and they start blitzing, now, now the, the, the back can move, but he can't come towards the line. See, and he starts moving towards the line. Now, if he would have gone up there and set for a second, he could do that. But I think that Emmett saw that he had to pick up a blitz and he tried to get in position to pick up the blitz before the ball was snapped. As it was, they wound up with two men in motion. Yeah, that's why I had he been able to, yeah. he can move up if he sets and it's not motion, but he can't be moving that's forward and going in motion. Third down. Here comes the blitz again. Aikman for Harper. Incomplete. And a flag on the play. Well, Harper hopes so. That was Dion Figures covering him. Rod Woodson in there. He's these guys. So, yep. Number 21. That's the first down on the one-yard line. I think Woodson's telling them, you know, if you can't earn it, don't take the cheap ones, but. Figures gets him there, and he hit him. Oh, no question he, about he it. He hits him before the ball gets there. Yep. That's interference. See, in fact, he wasn't playing the ball when he hit him. There at the end, it was okay. Now, we know what Emmett Smith did the time before, but watch him block here. I mean, he just takes on. It doesn't make any difference. Linemen, linebackers, whatever. That one was their defensive end, Ray Seals. And that's what happened when you blitz. You know, you... You, you come down to the inside, and then the back has to take a defensive lineman. First and goal at the one. No. Nope. It's Emmett Smith. Arnell Lake and Kevin Green converge. They're going to play this one tough. If you just look up here, Carnell Lake is going to come right off that outside. 37 and no one is going to block him. Carnell Lake is a strong safety, but in college he was a linebacker and he played that one like a linebacker. They might have lost a little bit. Second and goal. Aikman. Johnston. Touchdown. Diving catch by Daryl Johnston. That was a heck of a catch by Johnson, but a heck of a throw by Troy Aikman because Kevin Green was right in his face. He was throwing to the right, and Kevin Green was right there, and he got it past Kevin Green right out there to Daryl Johnston. If you watch, you'll see Green right here. See, so he not only has to step backwards to avoid that thing, but then he has to find Daryl Johnston and lead him perfectly. I mean, anyone could throw it when you could step into it. When you have to be stepping backwards, getting away from the tackle, and throw it. 
Bonio's extra point is good, and the Cowboys lead it 13 to 3. Summer is passing very quickly, and so is this special summer offer. On the 270 horsepower Seville SLS with the North Star system. For just $4.99 a month for 24 months with $2,500 down, reserve your own private world. The Cadillac Seville SLS. See your Cadillac dealer soon before this special summer offer passes you by. It happens every day. As the earth rolls on its belly, the lights go out from east to west. Night sweeps across the land. This is the time when dreams are made. And as another day is put to bed, a tired eye blinks once, twice. Good night, sleepyhead. Sir, we make the world's best mattress. Let's look at again what an NFL quarterback has to do. Watch Troy Aikman now. Kevin Green is coming. He has to look, step backwards, and make a throw to make this catch possible. I mean, that's, that's a world championship play right there. I mean, that's what got them to two straight world championships. I'm mean, guys that will hang in there. You know I mean? What we were talking about is a lot of guys can stand there and throw the ball in warm-ups and stuff. But when you can stand in there and a guy is blitzing you and he's hanging around your neck and throw a touchdown pass like that, and a guy can make a catch Heck like a that, catch. and he's about the fifth guy you're looking for. Bonio the kickoff. Puts him deep. Going to feel this one at about 19 out of 14. Take his heart. Woodson gets one block. Try something else. Coming up on the Dockers halftime, James Brown and Terry Bradshaw will have all the scores and highlights from the first week of the 1994 NFL season. That's all coming up on the Dockers halftime. 13 to 3, the score at Three Rivers Stadium. Steeler ball, first and 10 at their own 25. Neil O'Donnell remains the quarterback. Yep. A lot of arm problems throughout the year, last year. Well, here he says he's fine. But the rush is too much. Jim Jeffcoat around think, the corner. I think that one was good coverage on that, too, because the, the Steelers were in that formation where they had their five receivers in there with Dwight Stone in the backfield. The Cowboys were in their dying defense. They had perfect coverage. The Cowboys rushing now with Jeff Coat on the right side and Haley on the left, and Jeff Coat might be shaking a bit. I think if I were the Steelers, you'd just try and get this half over because, you know, third and 20 is a tough one. You don't want to do something stupid here. And you're only down 13 to 3. You don't want to force anything, and you don't want the Cowboys to get the ball again in good field position. Incomplete. Intended for Ernie Mills. Yep, they did something. They threw it inside. You can see what they're doing with Jeff Coat there. He just has cramps. Cramp. And again, I think we're starting to see some fatigue here in this first regular season game. Guys in the preseason, they don't play as much, and then they they have to play more, they have to play longer, they have to play at a faster level. And I think it's starting to show a little in this first half. We're really going to see it in the second half. You can work out all you want to, but until you get under the heat and under the gun like this, it's not the same. Mark Royal's kick is high and short. It's a cowboy bounce. The Steelers down at it, their own 45. I think the Steelers really fell into a trap there, Pat. I think that, you know, going with the five wide receivers, maybe you take one shot at it, but when you don't get it and you just want them not to have the ball again. And I think when they were like third and 20, that they should have just ran the ball, taken some time off the clock, because now the Cowboys are too explosive to give them another shot here. Kevin Williams saying, get away from it. 
Yeah, and you know that any time that ball hits, it's a live ball. If it hits a cowboy, then the Steelers can recover it. See if Aikman goes for a little more scoring. Indeed, he does. Michael Irvin from Aikman catches down at about the seven. They will hurry. Yep, that was a trap that they fell into. Yep. They set the trap. The yep. Steelers went into the trap. And then they went to work on him. 38 yard completion. Dion figures as the defender. And again, they're looking for that anytime they can find a one on one match. I'll guarantee you, Troy Aikman's going to look to Michael Irvin. You see him use that right hand. Michael Irvin just got that right hand just to push him off just enough. Lost his towel, but still had that great concentration. 18 seconds remaining. Michael Irvin is a big, strong guy. And he'll go anywhere, you know, to catch one. I mean, he'll go up and he'll go out and he'll go on those deep ends and those crosses and slants and he'll catch the ball anywhere it's thrown. Down here now, once you get into this area, I think we're looking for a tight end and fullback. Tony Dorsett. He had a day for him yesterday at Pitt Stadium where he played collegiately. Just inducted into the Hall of Fame. Texas beat him. Of course, that's a big thing for Tony Dorsett coming back to where he played his college football. And on one hand, and on the other hand, watching his old team, the Dallas Cowboys, that he was so great for for so many years. Cowboys have one timeout remaining. Eight minutes. Pass is complete to Kelvin Williams. Run out of bounds at about the. Oh, about the three timeout Dallas of all the guys that they'd throw to you wouldn't expect Kevin Williams down there you'd expect that they would throw it again to Novacek and if you're going to force one to try and get it to a wide receiver I think you would try and get it again to Michael Irvin down here eight seconds left in the first half the Cowboys leading 13 to three second and goal at the three you're so right about the Steelers falling into that trap. Well, they didn't have field position, and uh, you know, 13 to three wasn't bad. And sometimes it's not bad just to run out the clock, go in and regroup, and only be down at 10. But you can't give an explosive team like the Cowboys this kind of field position. I'm sure Bill Cowers think if he had to do over again, he wouldn't have done it either. Don't forget, coming up at the half, all the scores and highlights. James Brown and Terry Bradshaw will get you up to date on this the first week of the 1994 NFL season all coming up on the Dockers halftime. Second and goal from the three. Aikman retreats. Knocked away. Incomplete. Novacek was the intended receiver. Now they'll settle for a field goal try by Bonio. I think that everyone knew that that he was going to look for Jay Novacek down here and that Novacek was going to go right to the goal line. That ball looked like it was in his hands up. Carnell Lake might have deflected it just before it got to his hand. Novacek will hold. Looks like an extra point. Bonio for his third of the day. Rips it through. That's the end of the half. With the score. Dallas 16. Pittsburgh 3. Stay tuned for the Dockers halftime. Fox NFL Sunday. This is Williams at about the 8. Two to the 28. You know, one thing about Emmett Smith, he'll he'll move the thing and he'll run left and he'll run middle and he'll run right. And if you look, he's only made three yards to the left, now 92 yards to the middle and 15 yards to the right. So he'll go left and right, but most of his yards are in the middle. That's from the inside of the tackles, the inside shoulders of the tackles, the outside shoulders of the guards. Most of his stuff, when it gets to the line of scrimmage, will be breaking through that area. He broke one big 45-yard run. Back to throw it. Novacek. 
That's his sixth catch of the day, and that'll be another Cowboy first down. Carnell Lake made the stop. You know, one thing that the Cowboys did and it is really quiet this crowd down. Remember early there was, you know, opening day and the Steelers and everyone was excited. And then Aikman came out and he's just doing surgery on this team. Emmett Smith ran the ball. And this is a very, very quiet stadium now. And they are watching the very talented Cowboy team. Harper is split wide to the left. Irving is up at the top. This is Emmett Smith. Smith again hammers straight ahead and gets about six. Levon Kirkland. You know we know what we know what Emmett Smith did, but the one thing about him, Ernie Zampezi offense and a Troy Aikman is he's going to spread it around. See, he was five out of seven to the wide receivers, six out of seven to the tight ends. Of course, the tight ends being Joe, uh, Jay Novacek, and three out of five to the running back. So that's one thing, you know. With Ernie Zampezi and the same thing with Troy Aikman, you just can't zero in on a guy or a position. Second and four. Daryl Johnson. Stopped by the middle of the Steeler defense. Got probably a yard. You know, though Moose is probably thinking, why is there such a big hole right in here when Emmett Smith runs it? And when I run it, there's nothing there. I mean, part of it is they blitz and, and they and they and they blow out the left side, and he goes to the right. But you know, sometimes you just wonder maybe he doesn't get there as quickly. Like Nate Newton said before Emmett Smith came, I was just an average guard. Now I'm an All-Pro. No question about that. He doesn't get there as quickly. Oakman flings it out of bounds. A flag on the play. And that was Rod Woodson again on a blitz, making Aikman throw when he didn't want to or just throw that away. That's one thing that the Steelers have been able to do is really disrupt before Illegal the ball is snapped. Number 71 was not up on the line. That penalty will be declined. Fourth down. You know, by faking those blitzes, getting up there, they've really disrupted this Dallas offense. What they're talking about is his foot is back here. See, he can go to the waist of the center. He can be on this line, but he can't be back here. They're saying that Mark Tuane lined up in the backfield. He's just trying to get an advantage on pass protection. John Jett. Rush on Jett. Woodson will handle it. Out of bounds at about the Steeler 37 38 yard line that's where they'll have the ball for the first time in the second half Here's the Cowboys that's what it's all about Barry Foster not much has happened for Barry well they haven't established him they started running earlier and then then they started passing and look at the pressure Neil O'Donnell's been has been sacked five times Hurried seven times, knocked down three times, had one pass batted, no interception, and he was forced to run or get out of the pocket six times. And the guy that started all that was number 94, Charles Haley. He's on the right side, and Haley, this time, the pressure from elsewhere. Andre Hastings made the catch. Darren Woodson, the defender. They're short of a first down. Well, Russell Maryland was the guy that gave him the pressure that time. He was looking at Maryland, got right up in his face. You see, Maryland is in a right-handed stance now. He's playing left tackle. He's going to be right here, and he just gets right up in, in O'Donnell's face where he can't throw the ball where he wants to. You see him get a push. He's getting double there, double there, and right there, he stands up, and he takes a swipe at the ball just before O'Donnell threw it. Russell Maryland is so quick. Not that big, but very quick. They run right at him this time. That's Chad Henning who met. Someone lost their hat. Leon Searcy. Hey, he's an impressive guy. We watched yes, him on, on film, and there's a lot of offensive linemen that play somewhat passively but Leon Searcy's not one of them. Duval Love is the injured Steeler lineman and of course Mark Stepnoski. 
working to be the best. Teammates, sponsored by the U.S. Army. Showtime. As Joe Montana goes up against his old teammates, the 49ers, for the first time. O'Donnell chased by left. Just fires it to the Cowboy bench. I tell you, you have to give credit to Robert Jones on that play, Pat. What they were trying to do is fake a reverse to the right and then throw a screen to the left. And you'll watch Jones. He's going to read it. He sees it all the way. See, the screen is going to come back to the left there. See Jones up on top. Let puts a pressure on. Jones had the coverage, and O'Donnell just had to throw that one away. Second down and 10. Four dealers from their own 46. O'Donnell gets to Barry Foster. Foster to midfield. Stopped by Tony Tolbert. The you know, one thing that we were talking about how the Steelers started out like they had a pretty good plan. They were going to run Barry Foster. They had some flea flickers and some tricks and stuff. Charles Haley disrupted him in that first quarter, and they don't look like offensively they've ever recovered from that disruption. They go with their five receiver set up now with White Stone back with O'Donnell out of the strip. Here comes Haley. He spun right out of the block by Searcy. Yeah, I and mean, that's what you need. You need a guy like Charles Haley, a guy that'll disrupt. Here he is right here, and, and the guy just gets back there and makes things happen. You don't know where he's going to go. He goes to the outside. He gets double. He spins, and at the end of the spinner, he comes right into the quarterback. I mean, he's always back there. You know, he doesn't get all the sacks all the time, but he's always back there kind of nicking around at you. Just disrupted. Mark Royal, Kevin Williams signal fair catch at about the 19. Stone down in a hurry. But again, it was Haley that disrupted things. Things one, Emmett Smith rushing, really controlled the offense. And that guy right there, Charles Haley, has disrupted this Pittsburgh Steeler offense. And that five wide receiver formation has been killing him. Emmett Smith was very little available. Greg Lloyd and Darren Perry. Charles Haley, three tackles, three sacks. That's the most sacks he's had since he came to the Cowboys from the 49ers. You know, even when he doesn't have sacks, I mean, Charles Haley's the type of guy you don't know where he's going to be. He lines up right, he lines up left. You don't know if he's going to go outside or inside, but he always ends up, you know, kind of right there at the quarterback's feet. Wherever. Take one to Irvin. Near the first down, not quite. Rod Woodson made the stop. Woodson has followed number 88 just about wherever he's gone all day long. Yeah, and Michael Irvin is thinking right here, he's going to run a slant. He's going to go down and then to the inside. You see right there, Woodson, he tries to get a jump on it, but Michael Irvin is so strong, and he has such good hands, that he just took that ball away from Woodson. Woodson played it as well as you could play it. Don't forget where it was thrown also. Perfectly. And it's Smith. First down, almost broken. Yeah, just at the moment, you think, well, Emmett's done his job, and he's kind of finished. Boom, he just breaks one through and gets another first down. Like I said, something's bothering Something, him now. Yeah. But watch this blocking that he gets in the right side. Eric Williams, Derek Kennard, they just knocked their guys back. I mean, I mean, the hole is there. You just can't believe that they're going to get something like that. And Emmett is down now. He tried to make it to the sidelines and didn't. Yeah, you could see at the end of the play that he, he started to walk back to the huddle and then and then he bent over and started to go to the sidelines. I don't think it's bad because when the guys are attending him that are laughing it can't be very serious. Yeah, he's OK. I mean he got up and walked off the field because there was nothing there. But when the three guys go over to Emmett Smith and you can see him laughing there like they're laughing right now you know yeah. that it's not a very serious thing. Well to him it's serious. 
That's <laughs> <laughs> like that. Thing. Oh, someone's having a little operation. They're having a little That's surgery. Yeah, if it's not you, it's a little. Below the waist. For you, it's an operation. It's only yeah. that's a little <laughs> procedure. Lincoln Coleman has replaced him. Eight and deep. For Irvin, incomplete. Woodson with him. Step for step. These are two great players right there. I mean, Rod Woodson is up there, doesn't get a bump. He's just step for step. Like, like I said, he didn't need any help. He gets a little help there. Those were two very good plays by Rod Woodson. I mean, one Michael Irvin caught, but that one was knocked down. Second and ten. Smith is back. And he's the deep man for the Cowboys. One steal misses, and then Smith hurls the body for close to a first down. You know, Emmett Smith can make moves, Pat, where you're not supposed to make moves. I mean, you're not supposed to make moves. You always teach running backs, get to the line of scrimmage, get through the line of scrimmage, then make your moves. Emmett Smith makes moves sometimes, like on that play, before he even gets to the line of scrimmage. It's incredible. You talk to look at this 267 to 36. That's how they've dominated. But you talk to the Steelers, as we did yesterday, and to a man. How do you stop Dallas? You got to stop number 22. But yet, you know you got to do it. You just can't get it done. If it were that easy, you wouldn't have led the league for three years in a row. Darrell Johnston makes the catch from Aikman first down. They are cutting the loose, the moose loose. Well, Troy said he was going to do that. Yeah. Every time we talked to Troy on Saturday night before the game, I always ask him that. He says, yeah, we'll cut the moose loose. Look, they even put him in motion. And then he just runs a little thing back to the inside. I'll tell you one thing about Troy Aikman. He throws passes that are perfect. I mean, he throws them right where the guy can catch. I mean, if you just put your hands up, Troy Aikman puts it there. Puts it in the basket for you. The throw again. Or deep for Harper. Incomplete. Bounced off Harper. Picked off by Darren Perry. Perry still on his feet, still running, taken down by Novacek. Close to midfield. That was a play the Steelers needed. They needed something to get themselves back into the game and then get this crowd back into the game. And this is a play. It has been so quiet. I know. You know since the end of the first half, again, the ball just goes off. Harper and there's Darren Perry right there. He makes a pretty good return here. Missed tackle there. Novacek is going to be the guy that finally gets him right there. Good tackle by Novacek. Novacek's had a pretty good game yes, today. Yes, he has. Done a lot of things. First down, Steelers at their own 49. Eric Green was the man on the move. The handoff is to Foster. Foster by Woodson. You know, when you have a guy like Darren Woodson in your secondary, it really helps because he was a guy, you know, both teams have a guy that played linebacker in college. He was a linebacker in college, and he plays safety now, but he still plays and tackles like a linebacker. Big guy. And I'll tell you, when you have tackling guys in your secondary, that makes all the difference in the world. Second and five. <laughs> O'Donnell back to throw it. Throw him deep. And overthrown, intended for Charles Johnson. Evan Smith, the cover man. They were talking about Aikman's throws. Even this one that is going to show as an inter interception is a perfect throw. I mean, that ball was right in there. Dion Figures was the cover man, and he just got his hand. Even when Aikman could run and move around, he still throw. That was, like you say, that was good coverage by Deion Figures. Here's that five receiver formation for the Steelers. A fake to Stone. O'Donnell. The collision. Ernie Mills makes the catch hit by Washington. The catch was painful. 
Now, James Washington said it last night. He said the way he throws, he said there's either going to be a lot of interceptions or a lot of collisions. This one isn't an interception, but it's the other one. He said he's been looking forward to that because he thinks that O'Donnell throws to the inside too much, and he throws inside between the numbers. And again, he lets the guy, he throws it a little behind him. So the receiver has to turn, and just as he's turning, there's Washington. That's a three-bounce hit. Haley. See the things that he does? We talk about disruption. Goes to the inside, gets triple team, puts his hand up, just keeps going after the quarterback. First down, Pittsburgh at the Dallas 35. Cowboys leading 16-3. Yeah, Ernie Mills did a, a nice job of, of, of holding on to that ball because he had to make quite an adjustment to get into position to catch it. And exposed himself. And left. That's not all you say it, is it? Well, he did to James Washington's collision. Foster. A couple. In the arms of Dixon Edwards and Tony Tolbert. That's the thing I know when I talked to Ron Earhart yesterday he really wanted to establish Barry Foster and run and run and run kind of spread out the Cowboy defense then go to play pass for his passing but he didn't establish the run so then he couldn't go to the play pass he ended up in long yardage too much and had to use that five wide receiver formation that really didn't pay off for him yet Foster in the game at the deep back position has 13 carries for 40 yards. O'Donnell back to throw it. And he's chased by Haley. And shuffles out of bounds. Look at Bill Cowher. You can almost read his lips saying, throw the ball. <laughs> he's still I saying it. it. You're a quarterback? Throw it. Watch him. You see him here. He's telling O'Donnell, throw the ball. Okay, you always have to watch out as a coach that the quarterback may hand you the ball and say, go you show me it. how. You throw it. Third and 15. Out of the spread. Just barely got rid of it. O'Donnell under pressure again. Dallas rushers were Chad Hennings and Haley again. Well, that's the thing. They haven't had any success when they got in this formation as five wide receivers because everyone knows it's a pass. He has third and long. Here comes Haley from the left side. He's getting a blitz from the from straight up the middle from Washington, and it's tough to throw in that situation. Just inside the five by Craig Keith, where Dallas will take over deep in their own territory. And next week is my fifth wedding anniversary. It's unbelievable how time. Thing that's killing them, not the formation. Well, they wouldn't be in that formation. Here's the handoff to Emmett Smith. Out to the ten. You know, I think Ernie Zampezi, you know, Ernie Zampezi was with the Rams and Norv Turner worked with Ernie Zampezi. So Ernie Zampezi was kind of the teacher of Norv Turner. And then Norv came to the, the Dallas Cowboys as offensive coordinator. And then he went on to Washington. And then Ernie came and took Norv's place. So really, in essence, what you have is the teacher here being the offensive coordinator now. As the guest. Kevin Green made the stop along with Joel Steed. It was interesting hearing Jimmy Johnson at halftime saying that anytime any team used anything that was different or they weren't sure what to do, Norv would just give the ball to Emmett. And I think that maybe Norv will learn that from Ernie because that's the same thing Ernie's doing here today. If you don't know what to do, if you're back up, everything's back, just hand the ball to Emmett. I wonder if he gets it this time. Aikman outside Irvin. Now, is that a good throw? Incomplete. He didn't get down in bounds. 
I'll tell you, you talk yes, about the, the timing and the rhythm. This is all just a timing pass. This is good coverage. But you see what he did? He got he got to the inside. He brought Woodson back to the inside, partly with his body, partly with his right hand, and then came back to the outside. Now watch the timing here. One, two, three, boom. Just throw that thing up, and it ends up perfect on the other end. I'll tell you, that was good separation by Michael Irvin on Woodson. What he did was he did some with his hand, some with his body. Damn it. Midfield is Emmett Smith. Remember this drive started by Dallas back at their own inside their five yard line. Dion figures made the stop. Yep, that was the thing. There's no time. Barry Switzer is here now, but it's still the same offense. I remember Norv Turner used to always say, look, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run it to Emmett and uh, throw it to Michael. And that's what they did. They're coming up again. Emmett, 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 Michael, Emmett. And, you know, and that's, that's what you do when you're in trouble. Smith has 23 carries, 151 yards. Outside to Emmett Smith. And he scrambles for a couple this time. Tripped up by Darnell. Uh, Darren Perry. You know, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen at the end of the season, but I think that anyone that had any thoughts that the Cowboys have slipped or that the Cowboys aren't going to be there again or Barry Switzer can or can't adjust to the NFL, I think you can put a lot of those, yeah. those rumors to bed. Certainly the team so far has passed whatever test they were supposed to have. This is Smith backup, Lincoln Coleman. Well, right now the offensive line has just taken over. I mean, at this point, at this point, the Cowboy offensive line has taken over. Watch Nate Newton here. I mean, he is so big and so powerful and so strong. He just gets into his guys. Mark two and eight gets into his guys. They kick out. The holes are so big that they can put any running back in now, and they're going to get through them. They just cave things in. Well, I think when you get big 61 on you and big 71 on you, you're going to cave in. Or how about big 60, Derek Kennard? That's the end of the third quarter with the score, Dallas 16, Pittsburgh 3. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages from your local station. Plug it in, plug it in! What? The TV, the TV! Fox pay Emmett Smith, Pat, but I don't think they pay him enough. I think, oh. or whatever they do pay him, he earns. Anyone that says, these those football players get paid too much money, they're this, they're that. Uh, got to get in that number 22 and do the work that that guy does <laughs> on a say, Sunday. There, there's one guy who agrees with you. That's Emmett Smith. <clears throat> and uh, I think there's a lot of guys, anyone who's ever tried to do it probably agrees with me that this man earns his money. Thank you, Emmett. Irvin steps out of bounds at the 13. You know, and you have to remember, Pat, that this drive, like you said, started, they were coming off their goal line with yes. this thing and just run it, damn it, and throw it to Michael. And here it is again. What's the intensity here? You just drive, drive up, go to the inside. And, and again, those passes are just perfect. I mean, he knows... Troy Aikman knows exactly where the receivers are going, and he throws it not where they are, but where they're going. Perfect. And they don't even have to break a stride. He's the hottest quarterback in the game today. Here's Emmett Smith at about the 14. Darren Perry made the stop. Oh, you're right. Michael Irvin, seven catches, 129 yards. You know, the thing that he does so well is he works so well with, with Troy, but he uses his body and he uses his hands, and he gets just enough push-off with his hands to, to create position that he can't do with speed because he doesn't have great speed. And he's been doing it a long time. Almost picked off by Woodson this time. Oh, Rod Woodson took a jump on that one. Yep. He was waiting for that one. That's what a veteran corner does. You're going to catch some, but he's going to get his, too. Watch Woodson back here. He's looking into the backfield. He sees the throw. He gets a jump. That's the jump right there. He just didn't catch the ball. 
That was a perfect read and a perfect jump by Rod Woodson. Third down. About nine. Picked up behind the line of scrimmage by Greg Lloyd. They've done a pretty good job of blocking Greg Lloyd and Kevin Green because they're the guys, you know, coming from the outside most of the time, making the tackles on the run. Woodson tries to blitz. Mark A picks him up. Greg Lloyd just gets just enough of him. Just got a hand on him. Well, they were really blitzing for a, a, a passing down, and they just ran into a run. Bonio will try from 32 yards this time with Nova Tech. And he's good again. Four for four for the rookie kicker. 19-3. Spring drive. On the old four for four now on field goals. Charles Johnson back deep for the Steelers. On the old kickoff. High and short. Man, the return man to about the 34. Stopped by Matt Vanderbeek. Today's game was produced by Bob Stinner and directed by Sandy Grossman. Executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. Studio produced by Scott Ackerson and directed by Bob Levy. First and ten Steelers. 12 24 left to play. O'Donnell pass complete. Again, he was under pressure from the Cowboy Rush. Pass complete to Barry Foster for only a couple of yards. Well, that was one thing I think that everyone was talking about, you know, is the defense going to be as good? Yep. And, you know, everyone thought <clears throat> that the offense would be. Special teams can be pretty good, although they have a rookie kicker who's come through today but if they were going to fall down anywhere it would be on their defense but their defense has played very well today second and seven O'Donnell passes off the fingertips of Ernie Mill again pretty good pass rush by the Cowboy defensive front Good pass rush and very good coverage. You know, the Cowboys really felt that O'Donnell was going to throw any everything inside those numbers, so they're really shrinking down that field and ganging up on the middle of the field. And they know that he's really not a runner, so they're they're ganging up on that push up the middle, and it's been working for him today. Third and seven. White Stone back with O'Donnell again. Out of the backfield he comes. The pass is caught by Johnson. Stayed on his feet. Gets a Steeler first down at just about midfield. They to throw the ball in there like that. Uh, a guy has to be a tough receiver. That's one thing that I just said the Cowboys were really going to gang up on is those inside runs. And there was a guy, James Washington, who says we're going to get interceptions or collisions. And again, Brock, it was another collision. Brock Marion had the collision with the receiver that time. First and ten, Steelers, right at midfield. Donald back to throw it. Incomplete, high down the middle again. Intended for Yancey Thigpen. Well, it's not only the safeties that are getting involved in that middle of the field, it's also the linebackers. That time it was Robert Jones. And again, they're really ganging up or counting on that middle, and they're going to, anyone that comes in that middle, they're really going to tattoo him, and they've been doing it all day. Robert Jones was a subject of a lot of criticism during the preseason, but he certainly passed his first test, as has the Cowboys. The draw play, Haley goes right by. Haley doesn't care now for the score 19 to 3. Haley doesn't care about draw plays. He's just going to go get the quarterback and. You know, the fans are on O'Donnell. They've been booing him now, and and they really just don't have much of a passing game, and what's really hurt him is, is getting in his third and long, being third and long all the time, 
going to that five wide receiver not being able to get anyone open or be able to get time to throw the ball and he's just a standing target back there third and six pass complete to Charles Johnson O'Donnell got hit hard again, but Johnson made the catch. Yeah, and Johnson got hit hard, too. You know, that was one of the reasons that they drafted Charles Johnson, number one, because not only is he a good receiver, a good return guy, but he's a tough guy. And I think in this Steeler pass offense, you better be a tough receiver because they make you run at tough pass patterns. He was an interesting guy. And an yes, interesting he was. Story and he is. I think, I think someday he's going to be a real good player. Here's O'Donnell. Caught across the middle by Andre Hastings. And Hastings down inside the 15 to about the 12. Stopped by Kevin Smith. Andre Hastings is going to get there in the middle, and we're going to see it's the first time that a receiver gets in the middle that the Cowboys that don't have anyone in there. You see, they had one receiver run him deep, so now when Hastings came through there, they had already run the deep guys out, and there was no one sitting in there waiting for him. Maybe that's what they should have been doing, you know, cleaning out before you go to the middle. You've got to have time to do that. The protection was good that time. Here's O'Donnell back to throw. To Green at about the two. Big Eric Green. Taken down by Robert Jones. And the fans who were booing are now cheering. That's an area there, Pat. I think that's standing room only. Those people don't even get a seat. I think they buy what they call a stand. And they just kind of pack them in there. Those have to be the special people. I mean, and it's good to see young people at a game, too. I mean, I think sometimes the crowds have gotten too old because the young people can't buy tickets anymore. But that's kind of refreshing to see them. You know, standing in there and the younger fans at a game. First down and goal from the two for Pittsburgh. Dallas leading 19 to 3 with 839 left. The poor old Russell Maryland lost half of his six. <laughs> I think it's there. I don't know where it is. Just the box with that six go. Tucked in. Here's O'Donnell. He'll take it in himself. Well, you know, with the two points now, yep. all, the, all the Steelers, too, is, need is two eights. So they got one six. They got to get an eight here and another eight. So now here they definitely have to go for the two points. You're going to see a bootleg. He's going to fake inside. Then he's going to roll outside. It should have been an option runner pass. He could have thrown it to Green there, but it was too late. And then he just put it down and ran it in. But the Steelers, in this case, have to go for two. No question about it. They've already made that decision and made it quickly. From Look two at this yards. formation. What is this formation? That's bunch left. <laughs> no, but it's a bunch of offensive linemen around here. Look, big old guys out here. Can't throw it to them. They did have a receiver out there. Craig Keith. Dallas takes a timeout to reevaluate. Yeah, I think when you say your big right tackle, Leon Searcy, run out there, Mushy, what, what the heck is that? Timeouts, Dallas. Well, they shifted both their tackles out here. Now they're doing it to the right side. Look, they got all those guys. That, it must be some kind of screen pass to the right. Here's O'Donnell. It's the play's over. Pass intercepted by Kevin Smith, but he can't score any points for Dallas. Well, they probably worked on that the whole training camp. Yeah. Now, the linemen, they had a stand out there. They were standing out there for a screen. There was no screen out there. Now, watch these linemen. They have to stand there because they can't go downfield. So they just stand out there as they're going to run their pattern. You see, they have a screen back here. The screen would have been open right there. O'Donnell didn't see it. Get there, get there! Taco Bell presents the Crunch Zone. Get, get, Around get. the NFL last season, the action was fast and furious.
Stay tuned for 1993's Best of the Crunch Zone. So I met this girl. I asked her to dinner in a movie. She asked, what do you have in mind? So I said... Make it a blockbuster night and a border night, too. Go to Taco Bell, buy tacos or burritos and a medium drink. Get a free blockbuster video. Two for one rental and Taco Bell food. Make it a blockbuster night and a border night, too. Hurry and get a coupon for a two-for-one blockbuster video rental when you buy food and a medium drink at Taco Bell. Cross the border. That is a fan down. He made some pretty good moves, but ultimately the long arm of the law stopped the first down. Yeah, right there. This was the fan here, and, and we normally don't show this, but it happened right here, and the guy's still in the middle of the field. This was how he ended it. He got the cuffs on him. He's proud of himself. Yeah, he's getting some some attention from the fans too. Yeah, the only the only reason that you hate to show that is then all the people think that you know, oh boy, isn't that funny? And you know what a great thing that is. And it's really stupid. I mean, you know, someone running out, you know, on a field during a football game to get uh, acknowledged and you know cheered and that stuff. That's stupid. In a few hours from now, it won't be funny. To anybody. Yeah. Now. And I mean, they don't they don't belong in they don't belong in these stadiums. Steelers kickoff is going to be handled by Kevin Williams. Coverage is good, and Williams is down at about the 27. You know the the Steelers were probably working all year on that and all preseason on that two point play. And they really had something there, and then, and then it didn't work. Super Bowl form for this Dallas Cowboy team. Emmett Smith has 155 yards. Michael Irvin, 129 receiving yards. Aikman, almost 200 passing yards. Robichek, another big day. Smith to about the 30. Right now, let's send you back to James Brown in Los Angeles. All right, Pat, and speaking of in Los Angeles, it is now a two-point game between the Cardinals. As Steve Berline goes back and finds Larry Simpers, it is now 14 to 12. The Cardinals missed the two-point conversion late in the third. Back to you, Pat. At Three Rivers Stadium, 740 left to play. Cowboys taking their time getting up to the line of scrimmage. 19 to 9. Cowboys lead. Pittsburgh blitz. Newton in front of Aikman. Aikman just threw it out of bounds. I don't think Aikman wants to run too much now. Remember, remember one game was a couple of years ago or last year where he pulled a hamstring when he ran twice in a row. Now that's one thing that he doesn't do and really doesn't have to do and shouldn't do. And I think now, you know, we talked in the first half that the first game of regular season fatigue starts to set in. And I think it has set in for both teams. Third down and eight. Eight to Michael Irvin, first down. Covered by Dion Figures. But Irvin gets the first. You know, you wonder how, you know, what you do to stop this combination. I mean, the guy can just catch anything that you throw at or around him, and the guy throwing it can throw it perfectly to him. And the guy that's running can run as well as anyone has ever run, and that big line in front of him is the group that makes it all possible. So you wonder, how do you stop this guy? And they might be as big as anyone has ever been. Oh, they're bigger. First and ten. That's Emmett Smith. Again to midfield is in it. You know, if you just watch the right side of the line, I mean, the job that these guys do, I mean, these are just collapse jobs. I mean, it's 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 not even it's not even competition anymore. I mean, watch when a guy like Eric Williams comes in. I mean, they just throw him to the ground. I mean, look at those holes. Derek Kennard just buried his man. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're so big. I mean, these guys weigh like 340, 350 pounds. Look at the size of this Kennard. How'd you like to line up behind that? 
I never see you. <laughs> the Moose, Darrell Johnston inside the Steeler 45. Greg Lloyd made the stop. Emmett Smith, 28 carries, 164 yards. And the clock running with 550 left. 19 to 9, Dallas. One thing about Emmett Smith, he doesn't overreact to anything. He acts like he's been there before and had these kind of games before. And when you look at the statistics, you realize that he has had those kind of games before. Here's Emmett Smith again to the Steeler 40. Joel Steed made the stop. No, but a big part of it is Emmett Smith, and a big part of it is that offensive line, yeah. too. I mean, if you just look at those guys in the huddle, you know, as you go down there, you know, from Eric Williams to Derek Kennard to Nate Newton, Mark Tuane, the only guy in there that's not a real giant is Mark Stepnoski, and Stepnoski is one of the best centers in football. Yet he's so valuable. Yeah, but just look at the size of those guys. I mean, I mean that Eric Williams is is like 340 pounds. Canard, I mean, you know, I mean, just the way they line up across the ball, you know, spreads out the formation. It is a cowboy first down. Now, how'd you like to be at the end of the huddle? Watch Eric Williams, a commander. He's 79. He gets next to Canard. There's no room for the guy on the next side of the huddle. There's no place to go. Well, no one gets there. Well, the moose is trying to squeeze in there. It's a wonder the moose even knows the plays. There's, there's no place. He just kind of sticks his head in there. Those guys don't give him any room in the huddle. First and ten. Aikman back to throw it. Incomplete. Alvin Harper. The low ball bounced out of his hand. Alvin Harper made a nice move on that to Deion Figures. I mean, he got Figures going, think he was going to go deep, and then he just cut that thing off. And it was one of the passes that Aikman threw today that wasn't a perfect pass. It was just the end of it. Well, that was that was a pretty good <laughs> good pass caught. when you look at the end of it. Yeah. Second ten. A yard, perhaps. Levon Kirkland made the stop. They even pulled those big guards. You see Kennard there? Number 60 is helping Emmett Smith up there. Watch him pull. Here he is now. He's cheating back a little. He's kind of showing his pull. See, he's, he's already halfway there. Here comes big Kennard. There goes Johnston. He's going to lead inside. I think if I saw Kennard coming, I'd duck too, wouldn't you? <laughs> yep. He'll be easy to follow. Third and ten. Aiken to throw it. Going deep. For Harper. And Harper comes down with it. You know, Troy, Troy Aikman told us last night with Al, Alvin Harper, you know, he was a jumper. And he said that he's one guy that he just throws the ball up to because he knows if he gets in a jumping contest, Harper's going to get it. He says he tries to throw everyone else the ball, you know, where they should get it. But to Harper, he said he'll just throw it up as high as he can because when he knows when you get in this jumping situation that Alvin Harper can jump higher than the other guys are going to jump. And when you have that kind of jumping, you can throw into coverage. Watch him get up in the air. And he just did what you said. He jumped higher than anybody else. You know, it would be fun just to feel how, how it feels just to jump that high once. I have no idea. No, I don't either. <laughs> but, but just to get up in the air. I was thinking that when I'm watching these basketball players. Aikman headed over to the sideline. Dallas timeout. They have one left. It will be first and goal when they come back. 19 to 9, the Cowboys lead. You know, we went through the preseason, John, talking about the the communication, the new microphone that comes from the press box, the coaches down to the quarterback. Aikman won't use it. 
No, because it wouldn't fit in his helmet, and he said he was going to make an adjustment, but then he found out that Ernie Zampezi didn't like it either, so they didn't use it. So everything for them that doesn't come out of Troy's head is done by signal from the sideline. First and goal from the two. Emmett Smith is deep. Cowboys signal touchdown. Did you see Derek Kennard on that, the right yep. guard? I mean, he pulled out, and he and when he got there, I mean, he brings a big old load with him. But when he got there, he really unloaded it. Watch him. You're going to see number 60. He's going to pull out here and lead. But watch when you see this. Now, that's one thing to get out here. Now, watch him turn up, and then boom, did he unload that thing. That was just enough to let Emmett Smith get to the outside. And get in the end zone. And get that ball to break the plane. Bonio for the extra point. Novacek holding. The extra point is good. And the Cowboys extend their lead. 26 to 9. Short, right stone, drag down at about the 35 by Joe Fishback. 338 left. Dallas 26, Pittsburgh 9. You notice that all the all the players have that patch, that NFL 75th anniversary on their left side. Yep. The officials, of course, have it on their right side. Last week and the week before, Troy Aikman right tried hand. to wear his on the right side, and he got fined for it. Now he's got it on the left side, but he's got it down lower. O'Donnell to Yancey Big Ten. You see, Emmett Smith was on the left side. Troy Aikman was on the right side because he uses this part of his jersey to wipe the sweat off his face, so he didn't want it there. And they said, well, if he couldn't put it there, he'll put it on the left side, but look where he has it. He has it down lower than all the players, so he still has that top of it free to wipe the sweat off. See, and everyone else has theirs up higher. Isn't that something? I mean, you have to worry about patches and right side, left side, up, down, sweat coming off. And you get fined? He, well, he got fined for that, and he also got fined for having too large a towel. And Troy Aikman is a real guy, you know, to have a dry football. <laughs> you had a visitor earlier. Well, you know who that is. One of my all-time favorites uh, was Dirk Donardo. And uh, uh, that's Dirk Donardo. He used that's... to be the head groundskeeper here. That's Dirt on the right. Yeah, that's Dirt on the right. Yeah, and he's telling me stories about the old days and what it's like and what players are like today. He's retired now, but... Of all the places to go, Pittsburgh was never one of my favorites. <laughs> but when I came here to Pittsburgh, Dirk Donardo was one of my favorite guys. <laughs> Retired groundskeeper of the Pittsburgh Steelers and a good friend of the late Art Rooney, who was also one of my favorites and one of the oh, real great, great man, the real great men in this National Football League. By the way, we've gotten word that uh, Aikman did get a warning. He did not get fined by the NFL for wearing the patch on the right instead of on the left and the towel being too much towel. Just a warning. First down Steelers at the 44. Incomplete. Intended for Yancey. Big pen. You know, they talk about this being three rivers. Here's the Monongahela. Wait a minute, let me do it here. There's a Monongahela, and here's the Allegheny. Now, where they meet right here is the Ohio. Now, what this is called right here, Pat, is, yeah. a, is a confluence. Where they meet, it's called a confluence. So you got the Allegheny, the Monongahela, the Ohio, and where the three of them come, there's a confluence of rivers. And that's why this is Three River Stadium. Why can't they just meet without having a confluence? Well, because you have to learn words like that. You know, and then you could just throw it around. You know, well, what, what happened was the confluence didn't work. That was Jeff Coat 
taking O'Donnell down. That's eight sacks by this Cowboy defense. Today's attendance over 61,000. Third largest in history. Flag on the play. Two flags on the play. Three flags on the play. You know, and that was one of the questions today, whether, you know, the Cowboys defense was going to be up to what it's been in the past and whether we're going to have a pass rush. And they sure had a pass rush today against Neil O'Donnell. And the disruption caused by Haley. Well, that just can't be. You can't talk about that too much. He just makes things uh, of a disruptive nature happen. And I think, you know, the Cowboys had eight sacks today, and he was the guy who started it all. And I think he started it on that play. Remember, back when it was that flea flicker, and he darn near intercepted the flea Pass flicker. interference, number 86, offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat the third down. Pass interference called against Big Eric Green. But you know the 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 Cowboys are still going to be to me they're still the best team in the NFL and they're going to be a pretty good defense they're not going to be a dominant defense but with that offense being so good almost perfect then it's easier to play defense on they're a team always like going to be fresh right and the other team is always playing uphill like the Steelers were right. today O'Donnell back to throw it Maybe. Knocked away. James Washington made the play on the ball. Yancey Thigpen, the intended receiver. James Washington has just been, been sitting back there, zeroing in on everything. Again, we talked about this before how he said last night that, you know, that they throw inside so much. He said, that's what we're going to play. They throw inside the numbers, and that's where we're going to play it. Those eight sacks by the Cowboy defense. That's the most since 1987. And again, I think that, you know, a lot of it can be, you know, the defensive line. We talked about Charles Haley. I think the other thing you have to get is, is they had very good coverage. The secondary did an excellent job today for the Cowboys, and the linebackers played well, and then the offense just, you know, kept the ball away from them. You know, we saw, we said at the beginning of this broadcast, John, that we were going to see two of the best teams. Dallas certainly fits in that category. I'm not sure about Pittsburgh. But next week, a matchup that everybody's been anticipating a long time. Well, Kansas they were, City and San Francisco. They were thinking about that a year ago, because remember there was one time they thought maybe San Francisco and Kansas City would be in the Super Bowl. O'Donnell taken down by Bill Bates. And San Francisco opens up tomorrow night with the Raiders, and next week they play Kansas City. And of course, that's Steve Young against Joe Montana. And people have been waiting a long time for that one. You know, it's nice to see Bill Bates still in the league. Well, all the years. Who would have thought when he came out of Tennessee and a free agent, and every year they were going to cut him? And he'll do he'll do anything. But this is this is what you call confluence on a quarterback. See when. Three defenders meet at the quarterback. That's like Three River Stadium. Chad Hennings was the other man, but Bates, they say he keeps getting faster and he keeps getting bigger. Here's the move. Who Bill Bates keeps getting faster and bigger? What they say. <laughs> I don't believe any, any one of those things. Well, uh, maybe. He may be bigger. They is he. Yeah. Well, I'll guarantee you, Bill Bates isn't faster. He probably is bigger because, you know, he plays that he plays that dime linebacker a lot. He's playing more linebacker than defensive back, so he's more of a linebacker and special teams guy than he is a safety now. He's always been a great guy under kicks. Second down. Moose again. Detroit is going to turn him loose. That's a lot of carries for the Moose. That's about five. Big day for the Moose. Great touchdown catch he made earlier. Two minutes coming. Cowboys lead it. Moose again. Inside the 30, Daryl Johnston. Well, you know, when you look over in the Cowboys sideline and you see Emmett Smith taking off his jersey and wearing a jacket and a baseball cap and his left arm in a sling you know you can start keying on the moose I don't 
you know the fact that he's shaking hands and saying hello is is OK but that arm being in a sling you know he had uh, shoulder surgery in the off season and maybe it's just precautionary but that's not a pretty sight no. 145 left to play 26 to 9 the Cowboys lead they just picked up a first down. Thank you. NFL on Fox. Look at that they got all first names and Mr. Bradshaw. Was Terry well, Bradshaw. He played here. To, uh, yeah and, and did some great things here. I mean four four Super Bowl rings. There's okay. Barry Switzer he thinks he can relax now and start waving and say well Jerry Jones we got our first one. NFL on Fox. Fox stands for full of excitement. Remember that bird we had at Soldier Field Chicago. We got another one. I think someone packed that one. It's a Pittsburgh Penguin. Looks like a Pittsburgh Penguin. <laughs> Walking kind of slow. Aikman will just run it out. I tell you, the Cowboys were very impressive today, Pat. I, you know, this is the eighth game in a row that we've done of the Cowboys, and we have yet to see them lose in those eight games. The last one we saw them lose was RFK. Yeah, I think I think when you have the Aikmans and the Smiths and the Irvins and the defense and a Charles Haley making a play for you like that I think it, it does one group of coach it doesn't really matter who's in the booth does it when you have those people well, Big, maybe it doesn't matter who's on the sideline it's it's who plays out there and gets in that huddle and makes those plays that usually works out that way so the Cowboys win the opener in Pittsburgh 